Amazing final day action in the Premier League. The Barclays delivered on the final day. Fantastic entertainment as Man City win the league by only one point after finishing the season on 93 points. Liverpool finished second on 92 points. And Spurs managed to clinch the top four after beating Norwich 5-0. And then dramatically on the final day of the season, Leeds managed to escape the championship and beat Brentford 2-1, and that meant Burnley were relegated to the Championship. So, in this video, I'm just going to do a general review of what happened in the Premier League and all of the action, and then in the coming days and weeks, I will do reviews specifically on the title race, the top four race, relegation, and then also a review of each individual team as well. But let's kick off by starting with the title race, so going into it, Man City knew that all they needed to do was win, while Liverpool, they had to win and hope that Man City avoided winning. So it was very dramatic because in the first half, Aston Villa took the lead, Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. And there was that narrative going into this game, whether Man City would collapse under pressure against Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa, Coutinho playing for Aston Villa as well. And then Aston Villa took the lead. I think it was uh, through Watkins or someone from Aston Villa scoring to make it 1-0. Oh no, it was Douglas Louise actually. It was Douglas Louise making it 1-0. And then in the second half, Coutinho made it 2-0 to Aston Villa. And, you know, it was 65th, 65th minute gone, 66th minute gone. You know, a less than half an hour left of the game. And Man City had to basically score three times. Because at that point, Liverpool were drawing one all against Wolves at home. And because the pressure, Liverpool were piling all the pressure on Wolves, Liverpool were eventually going to get a second goal. And that meant that if Liverpool were winning, then Man City would have to score three times. And dramatically, Man City scored three times in five minutes to win the game 3-2. Fantastic game from them. And it'll be easy to forget this, but Pep Guardiola brought on Gundogan as a substitute and he ended up getting two goals. So that's a little bit of good tactical move from Pep. And in the end, Man City win the league. And this is now Man City's fourth Premier League title in five years. And so many people say Pep is a fraud, Pep's bald, Pep's spent so much money, he's got a fantastic squad, a huge squad as well, and that is all true, and their expectation is to win the league, but there's one thing saying it, there's another thing doing it, and Man City in previous seasons have won the title by finishing with 91 points, 100 points, and now 93 points, so their points tally is so ridiculously high, the football they play is phenomenal, and for Pep Guardiola to keep motivating these Man City players to keep going again season after season in the hardest, toughest league in the world, you have to give Pep Guardiola some credit. The players as well, but also Pep's done a brilliant job. Also, Man City have played the whole season without a recognised striker. And towards the end of the season, they had a lot of defensive issues. So in my opinion, Pep's done a phenomenal job. As for Liverpool... They'll be disappointed, of course, that they haven't won the league, but they've re they finished on 92 points. And this season, Liverpool and Man City in both games drew two all. So Liverpool couldn't have done too much. Klopp has built a phenomenal team, a resilient team. And also this season, they've won the FA Cup and the League Cup, which is amazing. And they still could win the Champions League. Liverpool deserve a lot of credit for pushing Man City all the way. Brilliant stuff from them. And of course, with the awards, Salah has won the Golden Boot and the Playmaker Award. And Alisson and Edison share the Golden Glove Award. And Hyunmin Son also won the Golden Boots after finishing on 23 goals along with Salah after scoring twice at Carrow Road for Tottenham to win 5-0. Going into the game, I thought Norwich would have taken the lead. I thought there was just something there that Norwich... Already relegated, but at home, Spurs, are they going to be Spursy? But no, Spurs were very, very comfortable winners. And you've got to give huge credit to Antonio Conte and the, and the club and the players for making it so easy and comfortable. Their phenomenal performance in the North London derby, then followed up by a professional win against Burnley. And then 
of course, beating Norwich 5-0. That means Tottenham are in the Champions League and Arsenal, who finished fifth, of course, miss out. Although they did beat Everton 5-1, a brilliant win for them. And it is a really bad finish for Arsenal. Although going into the season, fifth would have been a decent finish because you'd have expected Man United to maybe perform better in the season. But it is a massive missed opportunity for Arsenal. What I will say about them, though, is that they've got some really talented young players, especially in defence. But, you know, even going forward, Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe, Odegaard, and then in defence, Tomiyasu, Ben White, Gabriel, Ramsdale, all very young, all got a lot of potential. Even Kieran Tierney as well, who already looks captain material for Arsenal. They've got a decent future of Arsenal. It's just a massive missed opportunity. I'm really interested to see how next season they react, whether they can step up and the young players perhaps step up and gain more experience, or maybe they falter and have a poor start to the season. But Arsenal, they, the Arsenal fans will f- feel disappointed, but they've still got relatively bright future ahead, given they have got a lot of young, talented players. Then, in the relegation battle, you had Leeds who effectively had to go to Brentford and win because all Burnley needed to do was better Leeds' result and they stayed up. And a lot of people going into that game thought Burnley would win because, yes, Newcastle are a very good side, but the majority of points Newcastle have won since the turn of the year have been at home. And Burnley, they win the majority of their points at home. So a lot of people have thought, OK, Burnley going to win, probably stay up. But no, Newcastle took the lead for a Callum Wilson penalty and the second goal was really damaging for Burnley. The fact that Newcastle were able to play through the Burnley defence, Callum Wilson just tapped it into an empty net. It looked really damaging from Burnley's point of view. Having said that, when Corne scored to make it 2-1 to Newcastle, I think a lot of people, including myself, thought, OK, here we go. Burnley are going to rally forward and score. However, they didn't in the end. And only Norwich have conceded fewer goals than Burnley. And that's the crucial thing, I think. The fact that Newcastle made it 2-0. Because Burnley, they're OK at keeping clean sheets. Well, I mean, I say OK. Obviously, they've been relegated. They can't have been good at keeping clean sheets. But they're better at keeping clean sheets and having a good defensive unit than going forward. Burnley are just so bad going forward that ideally, Burnley needed to take the lead and then they could sit back and defend rather than chase the game. The fact that Burnley were chasing the game for so long, I think really demoralised Turf Moor and the whole crowd. And it meant that Burnley lost, which meant that all actually Leeds needed to do was draw. But in the end, they managed to win. Leeds played pretty well in the first half and really competitive. I did think Brentford were going to take the lead just because Brentford are a very good team going forward and especially at home. The fact that Leeds managed to get that penalty in the second half was crucial. Rafinha, it was a definite penalty. Raya completely took out Rafinha. Fantastic penalty, Rafinha. I mean, if he'd missed, you'd think, why why was he stumbling up to it? But no, he did a little feint and Raya was leaning to his right and it meant that Rafinha could just hit it into his top right-hand corner. And then Brentford equalised to make it 1-0 and you're thinking, oh, as a neutral, oh my God, are Leeds now going to get relegated? But then what was brilliant for Leeds' point of view is that Brentford had made all their substitutions. Christoph Ayer got injured after those substitutions and then Canos got sent off. He picked up two yellow cards in two minutes, which meant that Brentford were down to nine men. And you know what? Brentford are a really decent footballing team. If it was only down to 10 men, I think it would have been really competitive and Leeds might have not got the winner. But the fact that Brentford went down to nine men meant that all Brentford could do really was sit back if they were going to get something from the game. Leeds kept pushing forward and then in the end it was a really decent strike from Harrison. Yes, it took a deflection, but it was still a decent strike from Harrison in the last minute to cue absolute limbs and scenes in the away end and Leeds stay up. Fair play to Leeds and for Jesse March. Jesse actually made a really decent point in his post-match interview. He said that Leeds... In four games since he's taken charge, they've scored really late winners. You think back to the late winner against Wolves to win 3-2, then a late winner to win against Norwich, then a late equaliser to draw one all at home against Brighton, and then now a late goal away from home against Brentford. So Leeds have kept fighting right until the end. A massive, massive win for them. But for Brett, but for Burnley, 
I mean, where does this leave them? And it's so easy in hindsight now to say, why did they sack Sean Dyche? And we would have probably been saying that if Leeds got relegated, why did they sack Marlos Sela Bielsa? But as it's the case, Burnley are relegated. And you do have to question the sacking of Sean Dyche, given that Sean was at the club for so long. He just couldn't get a reaction from the players. And yes, it seemed like the players were tired and frustrated with Sean Dyche's methods and routines. And it did like Burnley were on a downward trajectory. But surely, if they were going to sack Sean Dyche, they were going to bring in someone else. But that wasn't the case. Michael Jackson stayed in temporary charge. And in the end, Burnley relegated. And you do, you know, if you're concerned about Burnley, if you're a Burnley fan, you do fear for them somewhat, given that they took the owners took out a loan of £65 million that needs to be repaid soon for the takeover. And then, of course, financially, they were still in the, one of the lowest, if not the lowest budgets in the league anyway. They're going to lose James Tarkovsky. They're almost certainly going to lose Weghorst and Cornet and probably Dwight McNeil and even Pope. So it's a massive, massive rebuilding job for Burnley next season. But for Leeds, they stay up. You'd have thought that even though they'll lose potentially Rafinha, Jesse Marsh will probably stay. Calvin Phillips may even stay as well. So fair play to Leeds. From my point of view as a neutral, it was a really entertaining day of Premier League football. And of course, it's easy to forget that Man United lost away from home against Palace and West Ham lost away from home against Brighton. Brighton had a brilliant season. Southampton lose again to Leicester away from home, which really puts into doubt whether Ralph should be in charge as Saints manager next season. And then, yeah, that that's I think that's basically it. Amazing, amazing day of Premier League football. The Barclays delivered it again. Like I said, I'm going to make some more videos in terms of Premier League reaction at the top and bottom of the league. But if you're watching this, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.